Good evening. Do the introduction, son. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> you could do your own. It doesn't have to be what I do. Let it rip. Yeah. <laughs> I rip it out the other way. I don't <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mr. A, with my partner. Sally Sasson in the building. Corona free. The Black Cloud. And this is the set 6145. Tonight, as always, we have a special guest, um, a Mr. John Rodriguez. And I want to add an asterisk to his name because Mr. Rodriguez happens to be, and and I hope I'm saying this so if I say it wrong, correct me, an MLB champion. Is that the correct way to say uh, it? Former MLB champion, absolutely. World Series champion. World Se- Right. M- uh, World Series champion. Mm-hmm. So we're going to chop it up with our brother, Mr. John Rodriguez, tonight. Um, as everybody's coming into room, just give us a shout in the chat. Let us know you're here. And um, as soon as uh, we're ready, we're going to start the show. As soon as we start seeing everybody show up. <clears throat> Excuse Sunday me. Sunday is raining. Y'all motherfuckers are inside. Don't come on. You, Last you know week was man? nice. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, Last week was nice. Y'all better come in. Come inside. Come inside. <laughs> Oh man, um, don't mind me. I'm just typing something. <laughs> to um, so so, mm-hmm. what's cracking this weekend, man? I mean, I, you know, I've been out of touch. I, you know, the situation that's going on at work. Yeah, and um, sleep has been a little crazy. But um, what's going? What's going on, man? What put me on? Tell me what's going on. What's up yeah. with this cat? I heard. Uh, I heard, Mister. Mrs. LeBron. LeBron. Oh, he got he got hurt. He got hurt last week or something. He's been out a few games. Um, Brooklyn Nets making moves still. You know, they're signing the uh, Aldridge now. Ooh. So um, you know, they better have no excuses if they lose. Lakers, I might sign um Drummond. NCAA tournament going on. It's my team, you know, my team got bumped last night, Syracuse. Oh uh, um, yeah. Bendito. But um, yeah. Salute to the Qs, though. They do yeah, it. They every did, year. you know, they they won a couple games. They shocked some people, but you know, they 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 got their ass handed to them yesterday. Yeah. Wow. But, speak, uh, wait, before you say anything, um, speaking of Syracuse, salute to my little cousin James Crump, who's studying finance. He's a Syracuse Orange man. I think he's a yep. sophomore year, doing it big. So nice. salute to, to little James Crump. Um, and his sister, Ariel Crump. Mm-hmm. Was on her way to becoming, a, I believe, an FBI forensics team mm-hmm. member. Nice. Beautiful things, beautiful things come out of Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Facts, facts. A lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot of good things come out of Brooklyn. <laughs> no doubt. Um, speaking of get well soon, actually, to my sister, man, she broke her foot yesterday. What? Broke a fibula and not fibula. Yeah, some of the fibula and part of her foot. So, what she She's in the cast. <laughs> I don't know. She got into fucking Bavila mode trying to paint and uh, shit. And I think she, uh, who knows what she did there. But uh, Too much she, mop and glow on the floor. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So don't talk to me about fucking breaking bones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm king bone breaker. Pause. <laughs> fucking glass. Glass. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Salute to the regular schmegula, Miss Angelica Ray, as we see you. Brother, Angel. Mm-hmm. I, uh, it's crazy because um, I got into a conversation the other day with a gentleman in my building about uh, injuries. And, um, you know, he came in with the with that boot cast, that soft, you know, the strap. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yo, what happened? You kickboxing? You know, like, what were you doing? And he went to tie his shoe and slip and broke the the, the top of his yeah. foot. Oh. And I'm like. What are they? What are we eating that's making us so damn brittle? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, oh yeah, don't don't mind the the, the wow wows. My wife is not here. Salute to Mrs. A. I miss you, but she's not here, and the, the wow wows are loose. So if there's any barking, don't you know that's what it is. Nobody tied up over there, son. I hope they don't knock down my band. You can see the back of the <laughs> <laughs> like that. The, the, the underwear is hanging yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> um. Uh, what was I going to talk? Tell you? Oh shit! Oh, so we were talking before the show started, and you know what? We'll bring it up after. We'll run the track, Mr. Johnny Chavez. We see you. Good evening. Um, 
Yeah. So let's run the track and then we'll get into it. All right. Cool. All right. We doing it big tonight. Good evening, everybody. You're all welcome. <laughs> I'm your host, Mr. A, with my partner. Sally Sasson in the building. <laughs> and this is the set 6145. Tonight, we welcome Mr. John Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez is a member of the winning team. He's an MLB. I keep saying it wrong. Terrible. Former MLB World Series champion. That's right. Former MLB. He got the receipt. He got the receipts. He got the receipts. That big, yo, that ring is fucking mm. tremendous, right? Mm. Oof. Wow. Oh, snap. We see uh, Miss Vilma Reyes. Good evening. Nice to see you in the room. Did you see this um little Nas X uh, sneaker drop? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw it. Yeah. And it's funny because I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I'm glad you brought that up. So you remember a while back they had this whole Kaepernick shit? Remember? Shit was yeah. going on with Cap and Nike was like they made a whole commercial mm-hmm. and whatever, whatever. Nike made forty two million dollars in the matter of hours of that commercial dropping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ask me how much money went to the community. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. They're hitting people with the, as my man Bradman in Texas would say, the oopty wop. And they using shit like this to stir up controversy, and the people play right into it because there's a lot of stupid motherfuckers in this world. They just in this let's say in this country, in this country, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stupid motherfuckers. So this I dude, saw, guy. This dude comes out with this sneaker. They're supposed to be like, yo, and they write this in the in the, the press release, like the PR mm-hmm. sneaker. That is it's the it's the 666 edition. It got a whole pentagram but buckle on the front, and that the liquid that's in the they put liquid in the bubble, it looks like blood. And they're saying that it's you know 660% red dye and six percent real blood. In that alone, why aren't people being like, yo, fuck little Nas X? Well, I'm thinking about that, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, motherfuckers ban paper, let pew, and all type of shit. And they, you know, they get their hair up in a bunch about this, right? Mm-hmm. But, and little Nas X is homosexual, right? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So now you're putting into light not only. Of the people that are against the homosexuals, right? But now you bring in Satan, in Satanism, those, Satanism. Yeah. So you're playing right into those people that hate. You know what I mean? Like the hate mongers. So, uh, you know, Nike, Nike's a business man. End of the day, I saw something the other day with Timberland. They said that you know KRS One was talking about it. Like Timberland skyrocketed because of hip hop. Hip hop, you know, everybody started wearing the boots. Yep. And you know, that was for construction workers, you know what I mean? So uh and, and Timberland denied it, like, no, no way, like that didn't happen because of hip hop. But you know, yeah, same I... thing with Nike, <laughs> you know, like 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 KG and them, they try to buy the Minnesota Timberwolves. Then what happened? And he got shut down. <laughs> but then they sold it to somebody else. So if if y'all ain't getting, you know, you could play in the league, but y'all ain't gonna be able to have that wealth, then y'all need to start your own shit. Wake up. Dude, there was a gentleman in the building that was talking about players having a conversation with somebody else saying, I don't understand why they spend all their money on jewelry and cars and, you know, what's going to happen when they don't play? And I'm standing there and I'm like, this stupid motherfucker don't know shit from fucking Shinola. Like, motherfucker, why are you watching them? I'll tell you why. Because he wants to use these people or this person, this player, to cast aspersions on the entirety of the people by saying, you see, that's why they don't get nowhere. Motherfucker, shut the fuck up. (laughs) Your fucking parents probably made their, your great grandparents probably made their money by stealing shit. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I saw uh, a meme that were like, yo, 
white people <laughs> racism is the only thing white people won't claim that they invented like they steal everything else but they won't claim mm. you know being the creators of racism like yeah. it, it's just retarded man it really is and and to to go back to nike do you understand that nike considers the jordan brand the hood like it's talked about in that way mm -hmm. and they mad at jordan right they mad at him because he did his own thing because they didn't think that he, excuse me, his sneaker was going to do what it does. Right. So it's still relevant today. When they ink the deal, he owns all that shit. That's Nike gets like pelitos. Minuscule. Yeah. Even if that, it's its own entity and it generates the most money. You know who mm -hmm. gave him competition? Yeezy. AI. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Kanye came along. That's how everything happened. <clears throat> and when all that shit that he said about slavery or whatever, that's when they hit us. A uh, salute to David Banner. David Banner was bringing this back up. When he said all that shit about slavery, I don't know if you remember it. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, fuck Jesus. Like, yeah, yeah. you're not buying them shits. That's when Nike hit us with the fucking Kaepernick shit. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. people pay the fuck attention. And just because we say, we don't agree with something doesn't mean we hate somebody. Yeah. Right. Well, and all we all that, have our opinions. Yeah. Let's be able to talk amongst each other like adults and disagree and be cool with it. You know, there's shit that we're not going to agree on that. Yeah. Fuck you. Racism. Nah, we not having a discussion about that because it's wrong, period. So we can't disagree about that. But. If we're talking about somebody like we were speaking earlier, trans sports or athletes, you know, trans athletes in sports. If you're a man and you decide you're trans, you should not be competing with women. You can't you, you shouldn't be. Right. You know, it's it's just wrong. But we're not going to we're not going to go down that. Yeah, rabbit we're not going to go down that rabbit hole today. <laughs> Let's bring JJ in. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, very exciting to have this gentleman on. He's from New York City. He's from our hometown. So I want everybody to show him love. And um, I hope you guys enjoy this conversation tonight. We're going to welcome a Mr. John J. Rod Rodriguez. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to play his intro. I got to play it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble. Lissette welcomes. John Rodriguez. You got to do it now coming to the plate. <laughs> <laughs> got to do it big. Mr. Oh, Rodriguez. There go the dogs. There go the dogs. <laughs> They're barking for you, kid. <laughs> Welcome to the show. How are Appreciate you doing? This, boys? Appreciate it. How's everything? Everything's good, man. You know, just try to stay safe, living life. Uh, I hear that. Trying to deal with uh, my kids, you know, here and there at school, like, two days a week and then the next week is three and then there's nothing and because right. there's one or two kids that got the bus some it, it is what yeah is. just trying to get used to that and then you know just trying to get my business together that's mm. it you know it's funny being a parent in this moment you know Sel selly still has young children that attend school my kids are grown um and hearing this from many different angles on how you know we're so ill prepared for our children and you would think in this moment with all our quote unquote technology and sort of smarts, if you would, that something like this wouldn't have had such a ripple effect. Right. I feel like that we have bright enough minds in this country that we would have been able to sort of institute some some sort of infrastructure to keep the kids learning. And they just come on, you know. Like they didn't know their ass from the elbow when it came to coming up with a plan for this. And it's sad. They didn't expect it to be this bad. That's why. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm, your kids are safe. They good. Yeah, That's everybody's cool. good. Thank God. Right. Thing, cool. Things are going to change after this for yeah. you know, every, the work offices. Yep. You know, people going to be working from home. They're going to start eliminating jobs. And, you know, yep. it's going to change a lot of shit, this virus. It comes in, and after that, let the technology start hitting up. Robots are gonna start taking over. You'll see. Yeah. Oh well. And people are really gonna be mad. That, that, <laughs> that's, Amazon is already doing it. Yeah, that's already. You know, 
I say this all the time. They don't do things right away. At poco no. a poco. Yeah. Right? Give a little taste. Yeah. They, they you know, they, they anyway. <laughs> Seems like uh, Miss Vilma Reyes is a fan. I love him. I call my son JJ like him, and his name is John as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, let's start it. I always like to start at the beginning because I like everybody to get a full understanding of, of who the guest is and where they're from. Um, so you're fr originally from New York City, right? Yep, born and raised in Manhattan, Upper West Side. Okay, still here, but not in the hood, though. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Over. For real? What? What? What is that part of your town called? Like that's that's not Spanish Harlem. That no, nah, no, nah, it's just where like Douglas Projects around there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the pre-gentrification uh, yeah. name and now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so in the beginning, are you playing are you playing uh baseball as a kid or do you get yeah. on, you know, the oh okay. So no, as a kid. I started, yeah, I started I would say about four or five years old, but just playing in the backyard with, with my friends. Mm -hmm. And it landed, it it started like that. It would it it kept going like that about to about 10 11 years old and then i started playing in leagues like goya and central park and then when i hit 13 14 i started going to brooklyn and playing with you service okay and then from you services when you know people i guess scouts and stuff like that started taking notice and then from there i had a i had a a tryout in yankee stadium and mm -hmm. check this one out. This is crazy because it's like they call me the, like the male Cinderella and shit with this this whole story. Oh, okay. My uncle, seriously, my uncle knew a, a cop. The cop knew a scout that got me the tryout as a favor. There was a hundred kids in old. This is old Yankee Stadium in nineteen ninety six. Right. It was old Yankee Stadium. Uh, mm -hmm. There was about a hundred kids there. I was just there as a favorite, so I was number one one. I still remember that shit. I had a big fucking one on one on my chest. <laughs> and you understand, I was the only one to get signed out of that shit. Really, one on one could have been LOL. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not all you motherfuckers. That there. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah, so Ooh. that was that's my story right there. Oh. And then, uh, in '97 was my first year because i signed in 96 in november mm -hmm. and my first year playing was in uh february of 97. i went to spring training and that shit was I, you know all right so caesar Prespa was a scout that signed me okay and he's like you know i don't have that much money to give you as a signing bonus i said listen you could keep your money just get me a plane ticket and make sure that i'm there and get my hotel whatever it is that i and i'll show you I'll let that money come right. and I'll show you what I believe me. Mm -hmm. So I worked my ass off to just stick around. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I was like, no, I'm better than their first rounders, their second rounders, their third rounders, and their fourth round, fifth. It don't matter. I'm better than all the guys you drafted, and I'm going to show you. Mm. Spring, spring training came. Mm -hmm. I, I had, I had, uh, I had the most RBIs and the the best average in uh in all of spring training in the minor leagues. And I started and I started in rookie ball. I started in right field and I was I came in second in in the batting title and third in, in the uh RBIs for the league. And wow. then from there they they put me on their prospect list. So, so from there, I skipped. The, I skipped the league, and instead of going to short season, there I went straight to A ball. So, so we, we, you you went from Brandeis, <clears throat> you went from Brandeis straight to the Yankees, is what yeah. you're saying, right? You yeah. went, you got drafted. Now, were you homesick at all? Were you like, how did you oh, know? Yeah. I know you travel with service and stuff, yeah. but was it yeah. like, it's, like it's even with like, even when I went. Like I grew up with my mom. My mom is a single mom. Like she just she's the one that took care of me. And just not having her around mm. was hard. But at the same time, I thought about making a better life for myself so I could get her out of the hood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just try and just, but, you know, old heads, 
She's stuck in the hood. She wants to stay there. And I'm like, all right, I'll furnish your whole apartment then. I'll make everything <laughs> lavish for you aside. I <laughs> it's, like, it's like when it comes to like my old school moms and my and my grandma, my abuela, mm-hmm. they want to stay there. It's like, I'm like, we can move. Like, what are yeah. you doing? Jay, did you get well out of the plastic covers for the couch? She already had that. <laughs> <laughs> With the bees? The- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I put her up. I put her up on a smart TV when it first came out, and she was like, "No, no, no, pero, 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 que esto, que esto. I'm so used to like the switches. <laughs> wow, wow. Let me ask she you, told, Jay. You were so stuck on that shit. <laughs> being, being, uh, I could definitely. I mean, we both could definitely relate to your background, but being that you know you come from a, a single mom home, um, who was the one that instilled? Um, the work ethic in you, because it's something that, you know, we've had a few other athletes on mm-hmm. here and we always, that subject always comes back around. Male who figures. Yeah. Who, and not only that, but like, who was the person? Because you got to learn that work ethic from somebody. So yeah. who, who was it that brought that to you? Well, my uncle, his name is uh, Bobby Allende. He's a, he's a, uh, one of the great percussionists that's out. Really? With Mark Anthony, Ruben Blaze, Tito Nieves. He works with a lot of those guys. Uh, he was the one that, you know, came around and, you know, took me to my games, baseball games, and practiced with me. Wow. But a lot of it, I feel like I learned from other people's mistakes. Okay. You know, that was my drive. My drive was, do you want to stay in the hood and be another statistic or be great? Right. But being great comes with with great sacrifice mm-hmm. you know so that was they where we were talking about being homesick mm. uh understanding that partying and girls came second uh you know just everything else like i had horse blinders but i yeah. needed to learn that in development in process like mm. it didn't all come at once i right. did yes of course i made some side turns where shit I fucked up. Let me get back in my lane again and just keep going. But those are little things that, you know, you learn and you really know for like right now, I'm just things like that. I'm teaching my kids. Right. You know, you You're going to slip up, but you got to get back on the course. Exactly. And don't don't go. I'm talking about don't go left, left where you're going to end up in an alley and shit just mm-hmm. ain't no coming back from it. I think that's one thing. Um, <clears throat> raising my kids. As soon as I understood that they were aware, like, you know, you reach a certain age where you start to see things for what they are. The one thing I've always told them was it takes one decision, just one. And you can end up like, you know, life changing life. Yeah. One that one decision could change your entire course in life. Yeah. And and, and another thing is, too, (laughs) is like the people you hang around with. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to have the right circle, man. Like this. There's, I believe, I have hood people Mm -hmm. that are hood, (laughs) but I have hood people that are hood that are Mm business-minded. Like, they'll talk slang, 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 but if you look in their bank account and you look at their, like, what their their progression is, Mm -hmm. is what you want to be around. They get it. Like, it's not, if you, that's the misconception about hood people is, oh, they're just ghetto. They dumb. They don't got nothing. They just satisfy with what they have. No, 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 no. I could be, I could be as hood as fuck if I want to be. But when it comes to my business, when it comes to family, when it comes to talking proper, mm-hmm. I'm gonna do that. I know what to do. I know how how to control my narrative as, as we talk about. Right. It. Yo, tell the broker to call me back later. I can't talk to him right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like. Um, your uncle was, you know, heavily invested in making sure yeah. that, you know, you developed as a young man and understood, you know, that what it would take to to accomplish the goal that you had in front of you, um, that you were passionate about, was going to take the commitment and the sacrifices, you know, and it's, it's super important. And I, and I want the audience to understand that, man, if you have kids, you know, especially as a man, if you have a son, you have to invest your time, you know, and, and build those characteristics up. Guaranteed. Because if you don't, the TV will. And we don't need that, right? Exactly. So <clears throat> you you go through this process, right? 
And now you're, it, it was the minors you got signed into. Yeah. What was working in the minors like for you? Did it feel natural? Were you ever out of your element? Did you bump head with coaches? Like, what was that like? That also, Jay, to add on to that, who was ahead of you? Of name, you know, because the Yankees is a prominent organization that yeah. it's tough to get drafted to. Yeah, so the people that were the people that were ahead of me was obviously the but to get into that right there. When I was with the Yankees, they didn't have a luxury tax, mm. so they could spend three hundred million and not get taxed. Wow! So they can spend like we had Bernie Williams, Paul O'Neill, Hideki Masui, David Justice, Daryl Strawberry, uh, uh, Gary Sheffield. All those guys, they could bring in and keep all their minor league guys down and right. not have to worry about that shit. Trade bait. 2004 came around. I was still, that was my last year with them. Mm -hmm. But after the 2004 season, that's when they had the luxury tax. Wow. <clears throat> wow. That's when they had the luxury tax. And that right there is what changed. One, it changed everything for me. Mm -hmm. Because when I signed, when I well, I signed with Cleveland, and then they traded me over to St. Louis. Okay. And this was in 2005. So from 2000, from uh, yeah, 2005. So from June 26, no, I'm sorry, it's June, June 16th to uh, July 16th. I hit this. Check this out. I hit 343. This is 34 games. Mm -hmm. I had 343, 17 home runs, and 43 RBIs. Damn. In 34 games. Wow. And that's the only way that was the only reason why I got called up. Yeah, and that was with Cleveland or St. Louis? With St. Louis. St. Louis when you got traded. That's the only way I got called up because what well, like I said, nobody did the Yankees they didn't have anything invested in me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I put up numbers with the Yankees in the minor leagues that people are dreaming about doing it right now in the minor leagues and these guys are hitting like 220 with like 10 home runs and whatever rbis and they're getting put on a 40 man or they're getting called up and i'm right. like Damn bro, it. one year one year in double check this one out in double a i hit 285 with 23 home runs and like i think 70 or 75 rbis and i got sent back to double a <laughs> do you think you stepped on somebody's toes down there like I don't it's know. It's just the organization. Is the Yankees? Yeah. You know, they were stacked, and that's what and that's what I'm saying. At that time, there was no luxury tax, mm. so it was easy to just bury guys and let them just keep going. Wow. You know? so, so, at no point did you did you start to become disheartened by that? Oh, of course. Every like, there's always certain points of your career or your life you're gonna feel that way. But mm -hmm. how are you gonna bounce back from it? How are you gonna you gonna let that just dictate your life? It's easy to give up on stuff. It's easy. Look, it's easy to be dumb. It's easy to be broke. <laughs> and it's easy to be not not in physical shape. It's mm -hmm. easy. Now you twist it around. How hard is it to be a millionaire? Mm. How hard is it to be fucking shredded, cut up, learning how to eat your food, bring it down in, in you know, different containers and portions. Everything takes work. Yeah. So if you want to be successful, you got to put in the work. You have to. There's, and that's what I'm saying. There's sacrifices that people don't know. Yeah, they see, oh, like for me, for instance, they see, yeah, this dude had a World Series ring. He's from the hood. But you don't know the sacrifices I went through to get there. You don't know the struggles. I'm you don't know what, how many times these bus rides. I was In the minor leagues, there was no planes, bro. Yeah. There was bus rides from like four hours to 15 hours bus rides. Going yeah. back and forth, hmm. you know, breaking your back, you know, just everything about it. You laying on like you, you just trying to get comfortable. So you lay on the ground like it's just uh, the hope you eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like back then I was making nine hundred dollars a month. Wow. And I, and, I a signing bonus. <laughs> and I didn't get a signing bonus. So you know PB and J was my favorite sandwich of all time. <laughs> you gonna eat that PB and J over there? No, exactly. <laughs> so I went to that bodega and I got that shit, and I was right there in my book bag. Damn, with that shit, it, I'm telling you, it was a struggle. 
Sally, you think tenía leche? Tenía leche? In the book bag? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. It, was, it was sugar water. <laughs> well, it was too expensive. Tropical for fantasy. Yeah, for real. Right. <laughs> it's crazy, um, especially in the digital age. I'm glad that you said that, John, because people nowadays especially do not see uh, the struggle and what it takes, right? What they see is the way to bring in the plate out to the table, so to speak. Like, exactly. And it gives people a full sense of, of accomplishment because especially now we're all plugged in young adults, young kids, little kids, they pick up their phone and they see people doing things and they're like, Oh my God, I could, that's so easy. I can, I can do no, you see in the end product, exactly. you don't understand everything else that goes into it. I mean, Selly's journey in baseball, man, for me as a teenager watching him, I was like, this dude's going to be in some stadium, you know, and, and not. That's what I it, thought, too. Yeah, it, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't. That's how good he was. It wasn't until that we started interacting with you guys and he, you, the same thing. Guys were telling me, yo, Sally was this, Sally was that. But finding out his struggle was like, wow, kid, I didn't know you was going through all that shit. Like, yeah, you know, it's it's and I say it to this day. I didn't I didn't work physically. You right. know what I mean? As far as hitting and stuff like that, the game, yeah. You know, running the hills and doing all that shit. Nah, I mean, y'all could keep that, you know? But that's what kept me where I'm at. And, you know, that's what kept me from not making it, in my opinion, you know? Right, right. Because I put up numbers. I went to New Mexico. I did, you know, I did what I had to do wherever I went. But physically, I wasn't what they wanted. And 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 that's a fact. Cleveland told me that dead to my face. <laughs> so. As a troublemaker is what the problem is. <laughs> no. I wasn't a troublemaker. <laughs> So, John, um, that comes to an end, and, and, and in that uh, that relationship closing with the Yanks, they move. You get traded to to Cleveland, or is it same? Oh, no. Yeah, two thousand five, I signed mm-hmm. with Cleveland. Okay, so I was with them for half a season in AAA. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, something happened where Cleveland needed a catcher, and and I was a player to be named later, but the GM for for the St. Louis Cardinals always wanted, like always liked me and wanted to sign me. Mm -hmm. So he saw the opportunity. He was like, no, 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 we'll take John Rodriguez. And from that day on, like, I guess it was just, you know, a new, like what we say, a new surrounding brings open awareness. Like you just, everything is just brand new. And it's like, wow. Fresh set of eyes. So we're things done different, Jay. Like yeah, Yankees me, is Cardinals. Yankees yeah. Cardinals. Like in with the Yankees, all right. I'll talk about fans first. Mm-hmm. Yankee fans, if you don't produce, if they paying you a lot of money and you don't produce in fucking two games, <laughs> pack your shit. Bounce. <laughs> Let's go. We're not we paying you millions of and the fans think they paying your shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. You know what I'm saying? Pack your shit and go. All right. St. Louis fans. This is why I say. And Yankee fans, you can hate me all you want. That's fine because I'm a Yankee fan. You see my gear. I am yeah. I was born and raised a Yankee fan, so I could say this shit. Mm-hmm. St. Louis, that's why I say, they say St. Louis fans are the greatest fans in the world. You know why? Because Juan Encarnacion, okay, mm-hmm. this dude went 0 for 20, and they were still cheering him on. Don't worry about it. You get him next time. You get him next time, bro. And they went ballistic when he went one for 21. Right. <laughs> His next A B bang, base hit. And it was just a bullshit hit. Base hit. I told you. And then from there, he went on a fucking hitting streak. Right. But they gave him that confidence where they felt like, hey, you, you're St. Louis. You're one of us. Wow. Sounds like Green Bay. They fucking love their players. You know, yeah. 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 Right. Nonstop. They and don't them. get me wrong. New York fans love their players. Right. But they have their favorites. Right. I feel like New York like, fans are fickle. Yeah. Like, for, for right. instance, when Gary Sanchez first came up, oh, everything Ooh. was Gary Sanchez. Bomba. He fucking shit the bed, what, <laughs> last year. Uh huh. And every Yankee fans are telling you, yo, trade that motherfucker. Let's get somebody else. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, one right here. Get him a What's guitar. Maybe you'll hit. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? For real. The thing with me with Sanchez is just I feel like he just doesn't have it like catching. 
You know, like I feel like he's lazy. just letting it fuck with him lazy. and take, you know, lazy. So what are you gonna do when you pay him? Yeah. That's my only worry. Exactly. Yeah. Where's all the talented? Where's all the Yankee fans in the room? Any Yankee fans? I'm sure there are some Yankee fans. We got people spread across sure. the state, Florida, Ohio. I'm we sure got a- all of them probably. Well, yeah. love to the Columbus, uh, Ohio fans because I played with the Yankees there in Ooh. Columbus, Ohio. And Columbus, mm-hmm. Ohio was that was, that place was legit. Yeah, yeah. I was playing there. Thank they you. Got the stadium. There's a stalk in the is, room. Watch yeah, this. Thing is- <laughs> 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 Listen. So so now you you get moved over there. Right. And you, you are you a, like, do you start out the gate? Like, how was the whole process yeah. for you when you get into to the organization? All right. So I'm going to tell you how my first my when I got called up. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, when I was with with uh, with St. with St. Louis and AAA, mm-hmm. I always forgot to take off my chain because I was so used to like having it on. Because in, in the Yankee organization, we were allowed to. But in the Yankee organization, you couldn't have none of this shit. Right. For real, yeah, no, you no connected no goatees. Stuff. Yeah, you couldn't have. You could have that fucking state trooper mustache. The porn, the porn, the seventies porn, eighties yeah, porn. Mustache. Exactly. Yeah. But you can't have a goatee, which is crazy to me. But, but if when once you go to like another organization, shit, you could have a full beard and look like fucking Eskimo Joe and <laughs> you know whatever. But they, you weren't allowed to have your chain on. So, so I got caught like two or three times just forgetting about it. Mm-hmm. So. I think it was my last game in AAA. We were in Memphis at home. Uh, first AB. First AB, I remember. First AB, uh, fly out to left. Second AB, home run. That was my 17th. After that inning, this was probably, I think it was like the third inning going into the, the top of the fourth. I'm running out to right field. One out. They stop. Um, uh, my manager stops the game goes out towards the towards the mound and points at me but behind me is our bullpen so i'm thinking they're going you know for for a pitching change right right so i look back and i'm going the fuck ain't nobody warming up like what (laughs) what's he doing and he goes that's our second baseman goes no you (laughs) i'm like what the fuck happened now so i'm running in he goes yeah the manager wants to see you and the manager's already walking in so Who's the double. manager, uh, Jay in the minors? Uh, you remember? Nah, I for, uh, forgot his name. Okay, no worry about I've it. I've had so many freaking managers, it's crazy. Don't worry about it. So I'm walking in, and I'm like, what the fuck? Is, uh, am I in trouble? I got released? Like, what the fuck is going on? You know, I, 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 I just hit a home run. What's going yeah, on here? And on top of that, I'm 17. <laughs> wow. I was, the, I, was, I was, put it this way. I've been there for a month, and I was the league leader Jesus. in home runs. And this was in the middle of the season already. Mm -hmm. I was already the league leader. Mm. So I'm going in and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And he goes, takes me down into the tunnel. Everybody, they're playing. They're continuing the game. Takes me down until he goes, do you have your fucking chain on again? Wow. And I said, no. And he goes, good. Because now you can wear it because you're going up to St. Louis, bro. Oh. I was fucking balling. Nice. <laughs> oh my god! I said, I said, I said, Skip, please tell me you're fucking around right now. Don't, don't, don't do that to me right now. But yo, seriously, go inside, pack your shit, go to your apartment, do what you need to do, and make and uh and call you know call your mom, your dad, whoever you need to call. So I call my mom first, and then I call my uncle. The one that I was telling you about, Bobby, right? Right. I call him. He's like, yo, what's up? What are you doing? I thought you was playing right now. And I said, are you, what are you doing right now? He goes, I'm driving. I said, bro, I, you might want to pull over because I just got called up. He's like, oh, shit. And he's <laughs> me, all I hear is, eh! <laughs> and he off. He's like, yo, you for real? And I said, yeah. He was like, I'll be there tomorrow. I'll be at your first game tomorrow. He fucking yeah. flew out. I put him in the in the front row. He stayed in the hotel with me. He was what yo. I've got my first hit. Second game against Ben. This was against Milwaukee. But before we even get to that part, I get called up and I got to St. Louis, got to the hotel. I'm like, damn, this shit is surreal. Like it just didn't make like this shit you see in movies right, right. or like you just dream about. 
or like your big league friends tell you about. Like you never feel like, oh, you're going to ever, you know, right. go through this experience. So I get there and I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to be late to my first game. So I got there like two hours before everybody shows up and I'm looking in and they're like, oh, so you're the new kid. I'm like, yeah. Security brings me in. Everybody's saying what's up. And I look and I'm the only one in there. And I guess Tony La Russa hears me, but he's in his office. Right. So I'm looking around. I'm like, damn, look at Scott Rowland, Albert Pujols, you know, Yachty. This, this is, yeah, but this is Yachty's rookie year. Mm. It was Yachty, Wainwright's rookie year. So it was me, Wainwright, and Yachty. That was the same year. That oh, was okay. Coming up. Jim Edmonds, Reggie Sanders, Larry Walker. Damn, Yo, that was it loaded. Was, bro, Chris Carpenter. New, uh, New York native, uh, Jason Marquise. Mm -hmm. like had, yeah, Mark Mulder, Jeff Supon, David Eckstein was our shortstop. Like, we had a squad. Yeah, yeah, I was loaded. So when I went in and I'm looking around and I'm like, oh, shit, there it is. So Rodriguez, 53. And I was like, I grabbed it and I was like, yo, this shit is real. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was like an unbelievable Thanks, feeling. Man. Like, you know, like, either like when you've when you see a fine ass chick and she likes you, and you go, all these butterflies are you're like, oh shit, she does it. Like, this is it, yo. <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I just felt like. I, like, uh -oh. I had butterflies yeah, and shit. And I was like, so I'm looking. I had Yachty to my left, Wayne Wright was to my right. And then we had uh, other a couple of other catchers and then, you know, everybody else. And I'm just staring, just staring at my jersey, staring at my jersey. And I feel like somebody just watching me. And I look over my left shoulder, it's Tony La Russa. He goes, come in here, kid. So I go into his office. He was taking he goes, him down? No, no, I, I can't. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> Take a shot, kid. Get over here. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I can't confirm or deny that happened. I can't confirm that one. Uh, I'm not gonna deny it either. I'm not, just, I'm not, I'm not confirming it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so he sits me down. He's like, you know, how was your flight? Everything good? You okay? You no know, injuries? No nothing? I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm ready to go. He goes, good because you're the starter lineup. You're hitting second, and our pool host is right behind you. So Oof. you better fucking get on base. And I said, starting what? Wow. So you're starting the game in left field because Reggie Sanders got hurt. So you're starting in left field, and you're fucking you're you're hitting second. I said, oh, "Don't worry about it, sir. I'm ready. Don't worry." Yo, I ran out into the hallway so fast, though. <laughs> like, I felt like I want to throw up. And yeah. I was like, "Yo, this shit can't be real." Wow. Shit, damn, and I was like, "Yo," and I'm talking to myself. I'm like, "Yo, this right here is all the hard fucking work you put in, bro. Thanks. All oh, the yeah. hard work you put in." All the no's, all the all the no's and the now's that you got from other people. This is this is your sacrifice. This is what it comes down to. Yeah, you made it. If you're here for one fucking day, so what? You made it. Right. But be appreciative on what this day means to you. That's how I just kept saying that shit over and over again. I said, you know what? Fuck it. This this game, I'm gonna just give it my all. It is what it is. What happens? I went one for four that game. My first A-B, straight center field wall, warning track. They caught it. Mm. That was my first at-bat, and I thought I got him. I was like, oh. Who, who are you Boy, facing? Uh, I got the fucking baseball, too. <laughs> uh, some, it starts with an O. It's like one of them German long names. Okay. That, it's like one of them Schwarzenegger names. And yeah. The whole jersey feels <laughs> like this. It was one A of billboard. Those. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and then, but my second game, we, it was Milwaukee we was playing. And this was the third game of the series. So the fourth game of the series, we were facing Ben Sheets. And you know how nasty he was with mm -hmm. that 12-6 curveball. First A-B against him, home run. Mm. So that was my my fifth at-bat was my – so my fourth at-bat was my base hit. And my fifth at-bat, the run. next game, my first, which was my first at-bat, was a home run. I went two for four against him uh, with uh, two RBIs that game. Nice. So as I'm rounding, and I think I sent you one of those pictures. Yeah. As I'm rounding third, you know, going home, I look up and I swear to you, I don't know how I found him. I found my uncle and he was fucking pointing at me like you did. Crazy. It. And bro, I, 
that you don't understand. Like I had to hold back tears, like, cause I was like, when I hit it, it was so surreal. Like, damn, slow motion Is it really happening because I didn't put it this way for me. I never wanted to look out into the crowd because I felt like I was just going to become overwhelmed. And that's when shit was going to fall apart. Right. So I, I tricked myself to like, just being like in the minor leagues, we hardly had any fans. Yeah. So it was just locked in on whoever was on the field. You know, it's crazy you say that because the other day I was watching the game and they said something about that the players kind of like judge balls by the stadium, like yeah. the stands. So like the Blue Jays was to play in Buffalo or somewhere and there's no high drop. So they like guys were losing the ball. And I was right. like, wow, that's crazy. And that's why they always say you can't. You can't rate a player or rate his talent during spring training because there's no buildings. There's no high walls in the back. So it's just straight, clear blue skies. The winds are howling. Balls are going all over the place. So if you have a kid that, you know, let's say he is new to, to, you know, any organization and he's making errors and shit like that with fly balls, it's tough to like judge that, man. Right. I tell you right now, clear blue sky is the worst fucking sky you can have as a as an outfielder or even an infielder with wow. a flat ball. Wow. The best thing is clouds. Having a, a cloudy day, mm -hmm. or like trees in the background, that's when you can read the ball the best. Once it goes up, it's like, Wait. it looks like you have skates on. <laughs> Wait a minute. I want to I want to go back to the emotional moment because I was getting all into it. Just running past <laughs> for, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that moment. I, yeah. yeah. So I hit it. Cause it was a high fastball. I have it on YouTube. As you see, the John Rodriguez highlights is, and it looks shit. She looks old, like it was back in the nineteen fifties and shit. The way the video was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a high fastball. I hit it, and I was like, ah, oh, shit. So I'm running out, and ball just keeps going, and I'm like, oh shit, I hit a home run. So I'm rounding first, and I'm like, I'm it's. It was hard for me, like, not to fucking smile. But so I'm like this going. Because <laughs> I was, like, fucking ecstatic. Not even happy. I was ecstatic. Like, like I felt like I won the World Series just with that one hit. Right. But it, it started to get emotional because I felt like years after, like, in between bases, I was thinking about the years that it took me to get there. Right. Bro. It took me eight and a half years just to make it to the big leagues, bro. Mm. Eight and a half struggles. Eight and a half years of struggling. Eight and a half years of going into small towns, being called racist names, being called the N-word. Like, I would turn around and I'm like, bro, all right. Do you even know what the N-word is? <laughs> In the dictionary, it means an ignorant person. It has nothing to do with color. Mm -hmm. That's how ignorant you are. So, which means you're the N-word. Oh, then go back to Mexico. I said, stupid. Which <laughs> means you're not doing your homework because I'm not from Mexico, bro. <laughs> so, like, this... So, I was going through things like that. like, right. And then, you know, drunk people tr wanting to fight. And, like, I'm like, I have more to lose than you. Why would I do that? Right. So, I said, all right. If it ever came down to that, I'm going to have people around me. And if you tr if you throw the first punch or if I feel threatened, get that's him. Self defense. Yeah, Watch you up. I'm not going to jail. Yeah. I'm not going to get sued because yeah. I have witnesses that you were threatening me, and I had to defend myself. If it happens, I'm going to wax your ass, and that's it. Goodbye. But it never got to that point, thank God. But I went through you know crazy times and crazy just, and these were like small towns, bro. Wow. On top of that, these were towns where usually they'll, they'll put them downtown where it's, you know, buildings are condemned and, you know, because that's where they save the most money and they buy that real estate for cheap. So that's where they put the, the stadiums up. And so you see, you know, homeless people, heroin addicts, like shit like that around the stadium at night. So it was like it was real sketchy on do I walk to the field by myself or like <laughs> <laughs> so you always had to you know, be, be on your P's and Q's and just worried about, you know, but once you're inside, it was like, all right, I'm right. good home. 
But yeah, those like, are like the little things that I had to worry about, you know, and obviously eating right because there was no stops. Everything was a state. We stopped. It was for in a gas station. So it mm. was just nonstop gas station food. Mm. So oh, you didn't want, you didn't want just, <clears throat> all the years when I was running those bases, it was just years of the sacrifice and everything that I went through. And right when I saw my uncle, I was like, this is where it started. Right. Man. You get called up. Right. So now you're seeing like, you know, you're dealing with the heroin people out in the field. Now you're getting called to St. Louis. Where did it, you stay in the hotel? Like, where do you live? The hotel is right oh. across the street. You stood so in the hotel you, living the whole yeah. the rest. Yes. Yeah, so, all right. So in, in the minor leagues, they give you, I think it was like 20, it was like $20 a day when you're on the road. So you could get your meals. So for $20, you have to make sure that you eat breakfast or save all of that for like dinner because mm. at the field you 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 get to eat so i got to the big leagues so it went from like 20 dollars a day meal money to 150 dollars a day meal money and i was like damn these dudes is eating like filet mignon for like lunch <laughs> or like what is like what the, <laughs> like water house with some truffle butter you know everything on it. I was like, "Damn!" They put you up in a four-star hotel, five-star hotel, and I'm like, "Damn, this is like it's dreamland." Mm -hmm. But the hotel was right across the street from the from the uh, stadium, and it's crazy because you think uh, nobody like I'm. Just, I just got there. Nobody knows who I am, bro. As soon as I got out of the hotel. People was just waiting downstairs. Oh, that's him right there. That's the new guy that just got called up. Let's get his autograph now. So just get you get bombarded right away, and then it's just it's a magical feeling, man. Right. Like it's something that you know you can't explain. But they give you they give you about I think a week, or well, it all depends on like your homestand. If you're there for like you know if you're there for a week, they give you that time to go and you know find a real estate agent and go find an apartment, and or they'll have something for you. And you could just pick. But okay. It was an easy. It was an easy transition. It right. wasn't anything like stressful as as it is in like the minor leagues. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't punch none of these guys who failed English and geography. I no, mean, not at all. <laughs> would have ended your your career. Yeah. And it, it it seems almost you know I don't know about you, sir, but I'm listening to him tell the story, and that shit you know you kind of find yourself. I I find myself in the moment. This yeah, guy, no, for you know, sure. You know what yeah. I mean. The high fastball, that's a dangerous fucking pitch because they get roped. <laughs> it's out in front for you, right? But um, the high fastball is the is the pitch that nobody's hitting these days. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They're doing that launch angle bullshit. And I'm like, that's why y'all keep striking out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, they're hitting 220, but they they're hitting home runs. Yeah. Well, it's a different game now, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. But it's they're not, going back, they're going back to the old ways. Good. Mm. See, I, I've talked to a lot of like uh, my friends that are hitting coaches in the big leagues. They start, they're stopping that launch angle bullshit. That's a so-called trend right now. Right. Mm. They're getting back to guys like Albert Pujols, guys like that that were hitting three thirty with thirty five, mm -hmm. wow. or forty home runs with one hundred and twenty RBIs instead of hitting, you know, two twenty yeah. with thirty and ninety and getting paid for freaking fifteen right. twenty million dollars a year. Retarded money. I mean, it's the it what mm. those those numbers right there, the second numbers that I told you hitting like two twenty. Those guys right now are getting paid 15 20 million. Right. Just mm -hmm. imagine if you were hitting 330, mm -hmm. like you get Mike Trout numbers. But well, this was saying, like, if you watch the playoffs mm -hmm. and you watch the you know, like you watch the playoffs and baseball stuff, the guys like Betts and you know, DJs, like those are the guys that shine to me because they hit the ball all over and they play the game, you know, the way it was before. And they put so. the ball in play. Mm -hmm. They got to run on third, less than two outs, and they're not striking out. Right. Mm. It's got crazy. guys that want to hit, want to be a hero in the first inning. No. <laughs> and I, especially in the playoffs, it's only gonna one, two, three run di is is gonna make a difference in runs. You got aces coming at you, bro. You got the best of the best coming at you, and it's always pitching and defense that beats offense in the playoffs. But if you're a team that knows how to bunt, knows how to move the move the guy over, knows how to hit and run, knows how to do the small things, those are the teams that win. Yeah. 
Why you think the Yankees keep losing? I know. Mm. They boppers. I know. And now my boy Marcus Timms, he's the he's the hitting coach for them. He's doing a phenomenal job, and he's getting them to start doing more, not small ball, but getting some getting them to realize, you know, a home run isn't everything. Right. Putting the ball in play, mm-hmm. knowing the situations. Give yourself up, may yeah, like LeMayhew. Run on second, nobody out. Move the guy over. Yeah. Third base. Now he's there with one out. Let the next guy do his job. Or if you could get a base hit, get a base hit. But if you run into one, you run into one. Don't try to do it. Right. When you try to do it is when you hit 220. I think that's that's super important. You know, the the the, the subject matter of what you guys are discussing right now is super important to somebody like me who doesn't follow baseball heavy the way you guys do. Because when I did watch the game, right, guys' uniforms were way dirtier. The, the the way the sport was played was different. In, in these scenarios, nobody's looking to rope the ball. Wow. It's all about movement and the basics. It sure was grimy. Right. Now it's kind of it's super boring. And then you got to worry about motherfuckers banging on garbage cans. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, bro, they've been doing that for a long time. Yeah, in different they just, ways. They just they didn't get caught. Right, yeah, right. It's just, like dudes, it's just like dudes in the eight, like <laughs> 70s and 80s doing steroids. Yeah. They just never got caught. Right. Yeah. It was never talked about until that reporter looked at Mark McGuire's locker and was like, "Oh, let me write a story about this shit." Whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't. Yeah. Was it his? You locker? didn't know about that? Well, he drew the Andro. He had the Andro. Dion. Yeah. Come on, he had, bro. He had a bottle. Mm-hmm. Like usually, like with with ball players, they'll have like their vitamins and all type of like. You know, mm. pre workouts and stuff like that in their locker showing. <laughs> this motherfucker had the this test dude, right there. Yeah. He had an over the counter steroid. Right. On it. And the dude was like, man, I've never seen that before. And back then, they didn't have no video camera or no, yeah, they yeah. were writing shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Short penmanship. It was just quick. Boom, boom, boom. Let me see. Oh, what is that? All right. Yep. The dude did his homework, opened up a case, and it was over. I remember being at Yankee Stadium that year that Conseco did the 40-40, and we were at third base. We had tickets to the third baseline. He stole third base that day, and you could hear, like, the ground pounding. Doo, doo. Like, it was almost like, yo, this guy's not human, yeah. and he wasn't. <laughs> you know, he was on the yeah. juice. Yo, he was he a monster. Was, he was literally – they. he was the Bo Jackson of fucking baseball at that time. Yeah. How big he was. Bro, this dude was like 6'6". Six, six. Running a fuck like running like he was Ricky Henderson. Yo, I'm telling you, bro. I heard the fucking doo, 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 doo. Yeah, like, I was like, ball, yo, what the hitting fuck? Balls, hitting balls like he was, you know, Hank Aaron and Babe Ruth, like nothing. Was he was he on test alone or was he on other shit? No, he, he was on other shit. He was, doing, Aker was on other shit. Yeah, he was on the he, oh, he said he was on the um what's that shit? That lean shit that uh the, the shit that gets you lean, the oh um 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 um, um oh man drawing the blank. I know what I know what it is, I know what it is too. Um, it, it's not a needle though. No, it's a needle. Oh, he was yeah, taking. The, well, there's yeah. two forms. No, they're taking a needle. Mm-hmm. He was taking. Winstrow, Winstrow, Winstrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Winstrow. yeah, yeah. Dude, that shit does a number on you. Yeah, a fucking. But they take number. that with something else. They take yeah, the Winstrow with something else. That's what I'm he he wasn't that out. He had to be on other shit. Yeah. yeah. That motherfucker's hands used to <laughs> back on the floor when he walked. Like he was a <laughs> exactly. fucking monster. Uh, Clemens, Clemens. Came into Gonzalez. Gonzalez, you, you ever been there, John? Houston no. and, and Broadway is a, a it's a old. I've spot. heard of it though. Yeah. yeah, he came in there with uh, <laughs> he came in with somebody else. When he walked in, dude, it was like a, the Cuco came in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's how fucking yo, dude. He's so big. He was right. Yeah. Like you see him on TV. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, oh yeah. You don't you know, think so? Yeah. 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 When he walked in there, son, he was like this. Like, Jay, who matter of fact, speaking of that, who like who would you see like and be like, damn, this motherfucker's huge? Or or you know what I mean? Like, like when you played ball against you know, him, you know who was like that, but skinny as shit? That was strawberry, bro. Yeah, like he was that. ripped, but bro, his forearms, right, his hands, like you and he would call me baby Jay. What's up, baby Jay? What's up, good boy? <laughs> he, would go, he would grab my hand and like swallow that shit with his own. Hand. He's going, damn, bro. You know who's big like that? But he's he's not as tall. Reggie Jackson, bro. 
Right. Really. And Reggie's my man. Like, I love that dude. But he right. is, yo, when I talk about all this, right? it looked like that. Like, that was his form. <laughs> wow. He, yo, he has, like. Was Pujols was, big? Oh? Pujols. Yeah. But he was. Like dad bod? That, like that dad bod thing. Right, right. Yeah, like he, was, he wasn't cut up, but he looked like he was just straight Manteca. Like, yeah. He didn't put <laughs> in what is, uh, the Dominican delic- delicacy that they were. Mangu? Mangu, yeah. He, like he was eating that shit all the time and just blasting balls, making shit look like Nintendo. Right. Wow. He was playing, bro. Yo, I tell you right now, he was the best fucking hitter I've ever, ever seen in my life. Right. In person, like, right. like seeing this dude every day, amazing. Like he it looked like he knew what the fuck they were about to throw. Right? Was and it like he really it. set people up like mentally yes. and this the... and didn't miss it? Like he'll swing at a, a curveball, knowing that he could hit it and miss it on purpose, and look mm. bad doing it, so they could throw that shit again and just annihilate your ass and go, "How the fuck? What did? How did he do that?" Right? Wow. He would tell me. He would tell me when I was on deck. And he was in the hole, just standing there. He go, J-Rod, watch his glove. If he does this, he's going to throw off speed. But if he stays up like this, he throws a fastball. Fast and he goes, when you, hit, when you hit a home run right here, you owe me dinner. I said, motherfucker, you make $20 million a year. And I owe you dinner. <laughs> if I, <could've... laughs> I make it minimum. And you, owe, you know what I'm saying? Like, you... 150 a day. Yeah, you know I'm like, what? What are you talking about? You're he fucking goes, per diem you know, to buy his dinner. Yeah. And then he goes, and then he goes, if you don't, if you don't, if if you don't get a hit, you suck. <laughs> so I go, all right, bet. So I see it first pitch, and I'm just I'm going, fuck it. He ain't that's bullshit. First pitch, he goes like this, fastball. Second pitch, he goes like this, and it was curveball. So I'm is one and is one and one right now. Here comes a fastball again. Boom, I hit a double in the gap. I get to second, and he goes like this. He goes. <laughs> and I said, yo, you're a fucking magician. Yeah. <laughs> and I go right. Who was who were we playing? I think it was Cincinnati at the time. And who was their shortstop? It was a white boy that was their shortstop. But anyway, shortstop, hey, good hit. Good hit, rookie. You know, nice hit. I said, yo. Watch what he does because Pujols already knows what what's gonna happen. I said, I guarantee you. I be, I said, put it this way: I'm not gonna bet you, but I guarantee you, he hits a home run right here. And the dude goes, he's gonna hit a home run anyway because that's fucking Albert Pujols. Yeah, yeah. I want to see if he does it anyway. Yo, I swear to you. First fucking pitch, pitcher goes, got him. Got him. Home run. Wow. But and you I still- have, yo, look, I'm gonna show you the fucking pitcher. When he did that shit, all right. Go ahead. We can keep talking about something else, but I'm gonna show you the picture that it was crazy. How how was Yadi as a teammate? Like the like, was he cool? Like was he taking guys under the wings at that stage, or he was just like no, trying no, to get no. him? He was just yeah, getting getting his feet wet. Like right. it was more Albert and Edmonds and Roland. Like Roland was super amazing dude. Like super quiet. So the, like if you ever wanted to like mimic a player on how to like be prepared and be a professional like, be a, yeah this dude was a plus bro he was mm. unreal bro like it was he was a different story uh. <laughs> wow <laughs> that's when i told him i said you a fucking monster <laughs> I said, yo, you incredible, bro. Jeez. I said, how? He goes, Papi, I told you. I told <laughs> I you I own it. these people. I own them. <laughs> like, you got to feel that way. He's like, I don't give a fuck if you're a rookie or not. You got to feel that way. Bro, when he was a rookie, he hit like he was a fucking veteran. Yeah. He hit like 39 home runs. Hit like three something as a rookie. Who was this, Dominican? Yeah. yeah, no fucking wonder. You see no, what the dudes were like, talking about, like, and he was, yeah, he was. I think he was born in Dominican Republic, but raised in the states. He went right. to junior college and everything in the states. Mm-hmm. But this dude was like unreal. Like yeah, him, Manny, like um, him, yeah. Manny, Edgar Martinez, the right-handed hitters. Those were like 
three of the like right. I'd be like these guys are the best. Yeah, in high school I was a freshman when Manny Ramirez was a, a senior, and we played him in Washington. Mm-hmm. Bro, that, uh, Sally, I know you you seen Washington field, right? Yeah. Left field is like four fucking fifty. Yeah, or maybe bigger than that, and he hit that bitch out easy, wow. easy. He was and I'm going, this dude is on, and they go, yeah, that's Manny Ramirez. That's the guy that, and I'm going, what? You were at Brandeis with Coco Flores? Or in, yeah. In... That was my freshman year, his senior year. And his brother. His brother was my roommate in college. Yeah. Bro, it was. My guy. Yo, just like seeing that, seeing him, and then seeing Pujols, it was it was a different story, bro. Yeah. Like, Sully had a teammate, uh, the catcher. What was his name, Sally? High school? Cesar? No. Catcher? The catcher. He was Dominican. Tall Dominican dude. Francisco? It was Cisco. Francisco. Yeah. So the story that they used to share was that in DR, how they used to play baseball was with a broomstick and a bottle cap. Yeah. yeah. And that's how they, they got it. Yeah, they still do. There's a name for that. There's a name for that. There's, There's a name for it? Uh, yeah. Damn! What did yeah, yeah. Mean? I'm sure if it, like if Randy's yeah. still in there, he'll probably know. That's bonkers. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a name for it. I forgot the name. Oh, of they that. throw curveballs with that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, but that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Develop an eye, young, like that, dude. That's a foundation to be a fucking hitter if there ever was one. Exactly. Looking at. Let me ask you, John. Cause I don't want to get carried. We're gonna go down a fucking rabbit hole with all these stories. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, I wanna get to the chip. Who is it that you faced, and was it a sweep series or was it a, you know, was it a battle? What do you mean, like in uh in the playoffs or in the world, no? Season? No, I want to we'll go, go through the playoffs, playoffs, then to the World Series. Right. If the you playoffs, want. we face. All right, in the playoffs, we. Matter of fact, we still have the record as the worst worst record entering the uh the uh playoff oh, season. Okay. I think we were I think it was like 84 and 80, something like that. Wow. So they thought we were just gonna get routed. Right. But when it comes <laughs> to the playoffs, it's all brand new. Everybody's zero zero. Like yeah. there's no records, there's no nothing. So who is whoever's hot going into playoffs. Mm-hmm. And we were hot going into the playoffs. They said uh, we faced our first series was against San Diego. They said they were going to sweep us, and we beat them. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. the next series was a tough ass series. Was the Mets? We went seven games with them. Mm-hmm. That was the well, frame that- Andy Chavez catch. Yeah, I was going to ask you, was that that series? Hit. And what's crazy is, you know, you and Sal knows this. When you make an amazing catch like that, and you come up in the next inning to hit. You're gonna do something magical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This dude came up in the with the bases loaded, bro, with two outs. Then the following inning and popped up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, we got this. Yeah. It's over now. <laughs> it's over now. I said they fucked up. They should have scored right there, and they didn't score. So then uh it's the Mets. I don't know if Molina was let off that inning, probably didn't, but he's he hit the uh go ahead run, he hit a home run. And then that's when Wainwright hit hit Beltron with the hey yeah <laughs> yeah got him just looking, looking. Like, can I help you can I help you now just yeah. looking <laughs> yeah he made him do salsa he was hey <laughs> yeah, yo we went bananas bro it was crazy <laughs> but then and then we went to Detroit and Detroit had the best record going into the playoffs and mm. those dudes were fucking they had almost everybody on their team. Who was their pitching staff? They had Verlander, yeah, right. Verlander, Kenny Rogers. Uh, who was the other? Um, oh gosh, what's the other kid's name? Uh, Bonderman. Um, I remember they had the other righty that ended up going to Washington. I know you're talking about. Too. Yeah, they had, and they they also had flamethrower Zumaya and Fernando Rodney at the time. Mm-hmm. At back into the bullpen, and we beat them. Uh, in four and five games, mm-hmm. we won the first one, lost the second one, and then we went home and we won three straight. Bro, it was gentleman sweep. No, so it was something where like it was just running out 
onto it, like the pile. It, it was it just felt like a backyard, like having fun with your friends. And then when you just look up and you're like, hold on a second. This shit is the fuck. We just won the World Series, bro. Yeah. Like it was surreal. Like you couldn't even like I couldn't. It was I was dumbfounded. Like I couldn't even put it. I couldn't put two and two together. Right. I'm just looking around like, yo, this shit is. I felt like I was just looking into somebody, like from somebody else's body. Right. Like, like out that, of body experience. Yeah, it was just that, like that. It was just that crazy. I couldn't believe it. And did that feeling was that every round you won, or was just the oh, World yeah. Series? Oh no, we pop every- bottles every yeah. round. <laughs> you gotta pop bottles every round. You spray it because you don't know if that's your last one. Right. So wow. you got you you win that, but you know what's funny? The yeah, no, we did. But we like every round was more and more of a celebration, right? Like we celebrated, you know, everybody had won the first the first round. Pop, that was it. So hey, congratulations! We're still not over. There's a lot to go. We still, and then we had a countdown. You know, five games left, four games left, three. You know, so right. we had that countdown. We got into you know the Mets series, and that was in, in Shea Stadium. Mm-hmm. That's before they went into uh, to new city, city field. City field, and yeah. That shit was a jungle. You want to talk about old Yankee Stadium? Shea Stadium was a jungle as well, bro. The World Series, bro. Mm-hmm. Like it was surreal. Like you mm-hmm. couldn't even. But then, uh, Damn. that one was an amazing feeling because I had family members that went to that game. You know, because we were in New York, we played right. in New York that that series, and then um, just being around them and being in New York and then playing against the Mets was well, the Mets fans game. giving you the business. Like, yeah, but the crazy shit was Mets fans were like rooting for me only, right? Yeah, <laughs> because my family was in the Mets section. Yeah, and it was like, what are you doing? Why are you cheering for St. Louis? He's like, no, that's my son. He's on St. Louis and. You know, he was born and raised here in New York, and and it was like, oh, I bet we're gonna cheer for him only. Everybody else, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Like I'm hitting and I'm listening. I'm like, yo, they fucking cheering for me. <laughs> and I'm looking up, and everybody see the section just, and it was just that one section. Right. J Rock, J Rock, like going crazy. Oh. I'm like, what the fuck? This shit is incredible right now. <laughs> so, then when we go back home to St. Louis, that was another. That was oh my gosh, that was something where still I, I think about it and I still get chills because it's it, it never gets old, man. And it's going on. This is the uh, 15th year coming up, 15 year anniversary. And wow, still, it's like, are they doing something? Yeah. The Cardinals are they bringing you guys back or? Oh yeah, they do every 10 years. Nice. They do every 10 yeah. years. Wait, 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 yo, John. Put it closer. Put it. I want to steal. Uh, put it on and put it close. Let me put the. Yeah, yeah. So put the put the oh. ring on, son. Look at that shit. Nice. You see the. Yeah. yeah I take it off to show you. Hold on. You got the Rodriguez, fifty three on it. Diamonds. STL. Crispy. And then. 2006 with the championship trophy and it says 10th world series title this was nice. their 10th title and then they won the 11th title in 2011. Mm-hmm. Ladies and, gentlemen. Stays, and you see how crispy it is this shit stays in my safe and i don't even bring it out really right shell everybody yeah. like yo when i play south world cell they be like yo Where's bring it up and fuck that no way yeah, I don't know. it only yeah. takes one dude to be like, "Yo, let me check it out." Boom, hey, it falls in the dirt. They, they gotta go clean. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Sticky Mm-mm. fingers out here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, somebody gonna nah, get killed for that I'm shit. Good, yeah. yeah, that shit Me? is. And it's not even all about the money, bro. I no, can't get that again. Exactly. Nah, they don't exactly. make that. Once they make a, a World Series ring, uh, to design. Yeah, but it's uh, it's casting, casting, yeah, the cast. Mm-hmm. Once they make that. They erase that shit. Really? You know, they can, nobody, you can't make it anymore. Can't so duplicate it. Ladies and gentlemen. It's and, one and of a kind. I have to interrupt our, our <laughs> guests. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, a World Series ring has been shown on the set. <laughs> by one of New York's own. I mean, you just, it don't get no bigger than that. 
So, man, yeah. that is fucking. And, and it's funny because before you came on um, this evening, Sally and I were talking and I was like, yo, I wonder if he wears the ring. And we were, I was just like, yo, that shit is huge. Hey, babe, look at this shit. Look, God, look. That, that sh- it's a this big. Is my, this is my wedding ring. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look how big that like, look. If it sits out, look, it sits. Fucking Thanos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing. Dude, see, that's for you know what it is. Cuando tú tienes los nietos, and they're yep. a little old and they're feeling funny. Exactly. Hey, come here. A little coco tasso with the yeah, ring. Put an FPL on their forehead. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the ultimate right there. Like you said, of all the hard work that you put in, you know, them hours and, uh, you know. Wow. It, you know, I always say it too, like, you know, not that it's lucky to get there, but the right time, timing is everything. Oh, And you were the right place, right team. time. You, you know? got to be on a good team, bro. And I was, and I was, blessed and 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 i'm very thankful and appreciative mm-hmm. to god to give me that opportunity great team and he told me like he get he said here here's your opportunity you're gonna sign with the yankees now take full advantage or you're gonna go back to the fucking ghetto mm-hmm. and that was one of my motivations yeah. to not go back but that John, probably, i'll tell you right now that was probably my main motivation i i, I listened to you talk about this this whole <clears throat> journey that you took you know, your love for the game and everything. But when you said eight years, I have very, I'm, I'm, I'm 48. I have very few friends that could tell me they've been with somebody for eight years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and in all sincerity, right. You know, like yeah. I can sincerely say I have a very small collective of people that I'm close to that can say, Oh, I've been, you know, my boy here, he's been with his woman for this amount of time. Eight years to be in that struggle, yo, it man. Was, but I'm talking about it was it was a struggle, struggle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was hardly home. Like I, I tell you right now, for from I would say from ninety from ninety nine to 2012, I was in New York for maybe a month, right. And it wasn't a month straight. It was like yeah. know, here, two weeks here, and then another week like that. I don't wonder. Because I went from, what is it, February, like the second week of February. So I was home from February 1st to February like 14th. From February 14th, I was in the organization. So from uh, February 14th to spring training all the way through the season. And if we made it through the playoffs, we were going through September and October. Mm. And I was back home for another two weeks in October to go to play in winter ball in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I was going to ask you, did you go play winter ball? Yeah, and I was there from middle of October all the way to, like, the ending of January. God damn. So I never, like, put it this way. for From 97 to 2012, I didn't know what fucking winter was. Right. You. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it felt, it felt amazing, <laughs> but I didn't know what winter was like. Yeah, I, I was, like that's not fake and bake. This is a real hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People were like, "Yo, it's it's about twenty degrees out here. You got a fucking tan. Where were you?" <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but, people, bro. I, I need to ask this question. I'm sure everybody wants to know in the room. Who the fuck is doing dishes and packing bags, bro? Who do we have in the room? Come here. Wife is that? Say, you gotta say hello. Come here. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's wifey. Yeah. I'm I'm ready to get on Sully. I'm like, yo, yeah. tell her to chill. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Good evening. Hi, Good how evening. How are you? How's everything? This is my course. Like my pride and joy, like everything. She's right. everything. And, and thank you for allowing him to give us this time because his story is really amazing and i'm sure he wouldn't be in this position without the support and love that you've given him all these years so thank you for that you're welcome you get salutes you know real women don't get it but we believe me she does everything and more like Mm -hmm. she's my superwoman like with the kids at home being homeschooled and all that shit she lets me rest she Listen. lets me sleep. Yes. Record it now because you when he messes around later, start oh, yeah. we got this. Don't worry. This don't yeah, go away. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, don't, don't go away. away. <laughs> like she knows. She knows. Like, I, like this is like I I give yeah. everything my world. Like nothing, mm-hmm. nothing is 
Nothing is more greater than she is besides God. That's how it should be, brother. That's how it should be. Salute to you. For real. Thank you. You're welcome. Good to see you, guy. All All right. Yeah, she be holding it down in the tournaments with JJ over there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. She comes, yeah, yeah she comes yeah. and hangs out, and yeah. you know, but she does. I couldn't even ask for a better person to be a partner, like soulmate, everything. Like she's, she's my everything, bro. Like I don't, That's I can't. Even, like I, I'm getting emotional just thinking about like what. She <laughs> like, she, no, yeah. Did you meet real. her in um Saint? Like when did you meet? When you guys meet like, after oh. St. Louis? Like after. Romance, yeah. Mm, that's what's up man yeah. it's difficult you know we on this show we touch on so many different things with people from like so many different walks of life right and in in our tagline so to speak is real people telling real stories um and it's very rare or it's been you know here and there that people have talked about their partners their wives their husbands whatever um but i think it's important especially um for our audience to understand that long lasting relationships and committed ones still exist. We all go through problems. We fight, we have our ups and downs, but at the end of the day, you look at that person and you realize and understand that this is the person that I want to go through the bullshit with. Yep. Right. She's the one that I'll put up with, you know, her flaws and she'll put up with mine. Yeah, she, put again, up, she put up with more flaws. than <laughs> world, boy. Listen, don't, don't incriminate yourself. Yo. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but that's what I mean. We should always understand that, you know, seeing the finished product, like, oh, look, we're here in Cancun or we're here at this party, whatever. That's not the relationship. Those are just moments in time. Yep. It's when you fucking down, when you're in that fucking hole in the gutter and, you know, in a problem. Those moments are what really shows you who you have as a partner. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, like I was. When I had to retire when I didn't have to retire because I wasn't ready. Right. I went through like not a deep depression, but I was depressed, bro. Like that's when yeah. I started playing softball again with Selly yeah. and like other other teams because one, I could still play, guaranteed. I'm in my fucking mid forties. I could still play like with all the young dudes. Mm -hmm. But it was just my hunger to still, just to know that I have it, mm -hmm. that I'm not wanted anymore. Oof. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. yeah. and, and, it, and that was the transformation where now teams are going younger and they're not using that. that they're not using, they're probably using like maybe one or two veterans to stay on teams to help young guys and show them the ropes and show them how to play the game the right way. Before you had one or two young dudes and it was all vets. Yep. You know, and then when right. I was in between that transition where, I was good. I was the young head chilling with the uh, with the vets. And then I became a vet. But then all of a sudden, it wasn't a whole bunch of vets no more. It was one or two vets with a whole bunch of young guys. And that's what the transition with the like I was talking about before, the luxury tax, where right. they had to start saving money. So they didn't want to pay the vets anymore. They wanted to stay with the young dudes. And oh, there's young. If you hit, you know, 300 with, you know, 20 home runs and 80 RBIs. All I need is this young guy to hit 280 with 10 home runs and he'll be cheaper. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, effective. It was a business. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so Jay, so totally understood that. And I didn't, I was totally fine with that. But my player competitive side mm -hmm. didn't accept that shit at right. all. I was That's like, fuck that. I could do whatever these guys are doing. Oh, yeah. Mano. You pay me little by, if you want to pay me, like, deduct my pay. Fine. If you right. want to tell me, oh, we you, we don't want to pay you two million. We're gonna give you one point five. I'll take it. Like what's right, the right, yeah. arguing I'm about? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are we arguing about? For what, real. what? What? Okay, so now you go through that. Then what gets you out of it? Like, all right, you know what? I got to think future yeah. business wise and things my like kids. my kids. Mm. I had kids with my wife. Like we had my little ones, and as soon as I seen my daughter, she was my first one born. As soon as I seen her, my whole fucking mental state just changed mm -hmm. like my whole lifestyle changed like just looking at her and i swear to you she was a splitting image of my baby picture mm -hmm. when she first came out i fucking lost it i was like yo this is this is this is it man like, there's nothing nothing Not about me no more. more yeah like 
my Jordans didn't matter no more. My fucking going out didn't matter no more. My fucking buying my, my watches didn't matter no more. You know, spending money here and there didn't matter anymore. Hanging out with friends didn't matter no more. Everything was for my kids and my wife. Kids and my wife. And to this day, I still yeah. do the same thing. Absolutely. I hardly buy shit for myself. And my wife will attend to it because she does the same shit. She'll hardly buy stuff for herself. <laughs> but I still splurge on them because I want them to be happy. I want them to have things that I didn't have. But at the same time, teach them that this shit is not free. This is not easy. I'm that you're not. I'm not buying you this because you think money grows on trees. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to work for this shit. Working mm -hmm. is just nonstop. Being good in school, being being a good person, you know, becoming a great person in the future. Mm -hmm. Just understanding what values life is. Yeah, life and value is. Mm. You know, and shit is not going to be easy. Yeah, I, I I have more money than what I had back in the past, or more what my parents did. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I'm not going to make it easy for you. Right. Damn you want to get? You want ten dollars? Give me fucking twenty push-ups. Like, shit like that. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. That's a decent you know, trait. You want? You want? My you kids want to stay you broke. Know, They'll be like, game. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you want? You want something that you really want at a, a, either a toy store or some sneakers? Show me good grades. Yeah, and I get you whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. You have you have all girls or no? My and I, my wife had three previous, and then we have two. So, but my I I adopted her three. So Got those are mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have my sure. last name. Those are mine. So mm -hmm. I have we have five total. Nice. You could have just said you have five kids. We cool with that oh, part. Yeah, of the story. yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's fine. But I don't. I'm not. But I'm not embarrassed about it. You know. What no, I'm you shouldn't be. Like, those are mine. Like, Listen, it don't matter. Let me tell you something. I've had, you guys I've had those kids. Yeah, I've yeah. Had those kids. I've had those kids. It was three. When they were three, five. I mean, sorry, three, four, and and uh, seven. Wow. Those are mine. Like I went from single to having an amazing family right away, right away in the beginning i didn't know how to fucking deal with it because yeah. new territory my wife could tell you she wanted to fucking shoot me every fucking <laughs> five minutes <laughs> or whip my ass or bust my ass or whatever she but she's but, trusting you with something exactly that's huge but you that's know? what i'm saying that's the type yeah. of woman she is that's how incredible yeah. she is yeah for sure she brought me into her family she yeah. didn't have to do that she trusted me with her life you know what i'm saying and like welcome with me welcome me with open arms and that was something that i didn't have growing up it was just mm. me and my mom right you know right my father was around but he wasn't around right you know what i'm saying my you were the only around. child um jay yeah my uncle was around but my uncle had his life like it right. wasn't it was just me and my mom right you know what i'm saying my grandmother was there in the building my my cousin but it was more it was just me and my mom right you know, and I didn't have that 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 family. Yeah, big family. So I was yeah. So I I felt like, in a way, I didn't know, mm -hmm. but in a way, I was craving that. I wanted it mm -hmm. and for her That's to open up a door and say, "If you want to be with me, you have to take my kids and let's do it. Let's do it." I so think I have before we had my first before we had my our daughter, mm -hmm. we got married. I married her. I said, this is me and you. Is We're going to ride this shit out for life. And then we got my son, and he's my next baller. Like, my daughter, she's 11. She's in gymnastics at Chelsea Pier. She's doing a whole bunch of, like, tournaments and meets and shit. And then I have my 8-year-old son. He was trying to, like, sneak up over here, and I told him, don't you relax. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he loves... Competitive gymnast for USA Gymnastics. Well, yeah, she's a competitive... Wow. She's correcting me. Competitive mm -hmm. gymnast because I'm not too. My wife is don't get it twisted, like, Papa. She, yeah, exactly. Competitive <laughs> for USA but Gymnastics she, is three years old. She does backflips that I fucking like. I still get petrified about. You throw your hip out if you try that shit. Throw my hip out. <laughs> I wouldn't even like like I I think about it. and I'm throwing my hip out. <laughs> don't try it yeah, for I'm real. Not trying, not trying this at home for no. real. But I, my son is he's eight years old and he's on an elite team. Okay. We travel to Florida. We travel to Georgia. We travel to Delaware, Maryland. So Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Like we're doing a whole bunch of like, and he's only eight, but nice. he's a big fucking eight. Wow. My wife jokes around because she says when we when he when he was born, 
It was it was steroids. <laughs> I didn't take fucking steroids, but if you want to believe that shit, she's Run seen with all the other ball players that and she's like, Every, oh yeah, motherfuckers did that shit. Don't be lying. Out of here. I was like, you want and the boy don't stop growing. But the thing is, bro, he's eight years old and he has a six and a half foot already. Wow. What? Six and a half. He looks he's like an L foot. when he stands sideways. Like bro, he's a half a foot away and being a, a fucking adult shoes. God, I'm a half a foot away what? from paying. Fucking price, yeah. Food, yeah. So yeah. Like, I want to pay. You better scrunch them fucking feet in there. You know what I'm <laughs> Like we used to do. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. Jordan's he's like, yeah. What is mommy feeding him? Like, yo, no, but he's just a big. He's yo, he's picky. Eight. He's four foot eight. He's four eight at eight. And he's seventy nine pounds. And he's wow. He's, yeah, he's eighty five now. Well, we solid, did the. Solid. Bro, he's that he's not fat. Like he's yeah. a fucking. Right, like, he like, put it this he's way, fat. he looks like a little baby Miguel Cabrera when he was younger. Yeah, like that. Bro. He was with the Marlins. Mm -hmm. he looks Hold like on. that. I gotta jump in here. You said your son is four foot eight. Four eight, and he's eight years old, bro. My man, my wife is forty four <laughs> years old. She's four eleven. <laughs> your son <laughs> is three inches shorter than Jesus Christ, bro. And he's a yo. I swear to you. He had, I bought him, what was oh, it? Last man, summer, is, last summer I bought him. He had a five, uh, a shoe was a shoe size was five. Mm -hmm. By the end of the summer, it was a five and a half. In the fall, going into like winter, it was a six. And now his shit, you talk about his shit is too tight. Wow. So I had to go to Dick Sporting Goods today and bought him a six and a half. I'm like, bro, I know I asked for this in God. I said, bro, God. <laughs> Let him be 13, 12 or 13 and let him be 6 1. Let him be a horse. Right. And look what's happening. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you got it, Papa. Yeah, don't worry. I got Yo. you. We're going to cook and it up. I don't know. Yeah, I know about Exit Velo. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. He's right now, he topped out at 63 miles an hour. He's averaging 55 to 58. Nice. What? And I teach kids. I teach. He is lefty J or right? He is righty. He I, I'm trying to get him to switch it. He tries it, it, but he's he's more. But yeah. he's righty righty. He's doing it. Yeah, he's right. Oh, of course. But he's righty righty. He loves yo. And then the thing is with him, I love it because he needs to be involved in the game. He's yo. He hates being in the outfield. Like right. you know, with young kids, right? Being in the outfield, they hardly gonna hit butterflies and shit. Like, like, <laughs> he's like that. No, no, no. If you're gonna leave me, if you're gonna put me on the team, I'm playing the outfield. I don't want to play. He wants the ball. That's right. what I love about him. He loves pitching. He loves pitching in like crucial situations because he doesn't fucking realize it. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. for us, you put a ball in our hand and you go, yo, we need these three hours, bro. Yeah. And we go on. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this for what? <laughs> I'm good <laughs> chasing the butterflies. I'm good. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh shit. Oh, like so. this, yo. Tranquilo. Does he catch? You'll be all right. <laughs> so he takes it in his bind like nothing. I'm going. This kid does not understand. And if he does, and if he sees the game as he sees it right now, like no problem. It's just easy. Right. Be my guest. And I Keep let him going. play. There's times where I I I'm you know I'm that dad that fucking screams sometimes, yo. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> sometimes play the game the right way. This is the way it's supposed to be played. I know it's you know, these days is that show shit, show uh swag yeah. and yeah, yeah, you know, showboating and all that shit. I mm -hmm. and I'm cool with it. I don't care. Right. Cause there's times where we've done it, right? You know, and that's the way the game. It, every decade is a different era and in different ways of playing the game. And like I don't care. It is what it is. Kids are having fun, showing people. Do it. When I was playing, you show somebody up, you're gonna get laced in the forehead. Yeah, facts. <laughs> you're gonna get pilled in the ribs with a, with a 98. You know, people they, like that, they didn't give a shit, and umpires were like, "Hey, you asked for it." Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, nah, sure. You asked for it, and every time a hitter showed somebody showed up a pitcher, is because the pitcher showed him up before. Mm. Hitters hitters wouldn't dare to fucking show up a pitcher because they have a ball. Right. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. They can hit you whenever they want. You can't hit yeah. them. There ain't mm -hmm. no way you could do it unless you you better have. Great, great hand-eye coordination with your target, bat angle, hand path to hit a late to lace a ball right back at them. And there ain't yeah. no way you're doing that shit. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, man. And now the game is different, you know. And you know, like I like I said, I let them play. 
I try my best to like stay out. It's hard, you know, because I, <laughs> I still have that fire, that competitiveness. Of <clears throat> I know what it is to get there, so fucking do it this way. Well, but he he's eight years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's eight years old, and I gotta realize that he's still a fucking kid. Bro. Yeah, and I he got he got to keep it fun. He's got to yeah. keep it fun. Yeah, yes. gotta let him have fun. Yeah, but that's the thing. If he's hitting, and then they put like you know, let's just, let's just say that he's DHing, uh-huh. he's on the bench. The motherfucker won't pay attention to the game. He'll run around and do other shit. And not pay attention. And I'm like, Jay, please. Yeah, I'm gonna try, man. Just watch the game and see what's going on. He goes, Dad, I got this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. Watch it. it's if different. I had man. Your confidence. <laughs> I still be playing. It's different. It's, you ain't it's, lying. I'd have been a first round pick. Yo, dude, I don't. Let me ask. Let me ask. I gotta ask this question. You, you know, early you stated that you know the competitive spirit in you would not allow you to just not play anymore. Right, that you still feel like you have it and you can play. Is that the only thing that drives you? Because my my guy here, I left playing football with him, yo, 1996, 96, 97. He hmm. stayed playing. I don't like I couldn't do it. I could I can tell you right now, I can't play that football shit. No. <laughs> I, play, I played football. I played tackle football when I was 14 mm-hmm. and didn't like really didn't know how to like tackle. So mm-hmm. I would tackle people head first. Yeah. So I was catching headaches after headaches. I was like, bro, I can't do it. You no could more. paralyze I, yourself. You yeah, don't know what you're exactly. doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I was started drilling people with my shoulder leading first and started fucking up. Like I, uh, I had uh, torn labrums and I didn't even know. And luckily, it was on my right shoulder, not my left. Right. You know, shit like that. I didn't know. And I was like, yo, I'm, I feel terrible. Now I know. Like, mm-hmm. even to this day, I still, I'm thinking to these dudes, now I know why they play once a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You can't play that shit every day or every two days or every three days. There ain't mm-hmm. no way, bro. Yeah. No way. Tackle football, two hands up, rough, rough tackle. Yeah, rough. you could probably play it, play it like every four days. Rough touch but on concrete. That, <laughs> yeah, but even that, there's... You want to, yo? So they don't I'm play that anymore. Weekend, bro. <laughs> no, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we played rough touch on concrete. Sully was our quarterback, and he was the lead blocker on kickoffs. <laughs> bro, this dude used to run. He looked like a thumb. Yes. <laughs> little ass legs, and it just came up to this right, Flintstone or so <laughs> like that. And these dudes that we played against, a lot of them, you know, there was big guys that we played around, but. Our first and second season, they weren't built like this truck over here. Yeah. And he would just forearm dudes and just forget it. But he stayed playing. Like I could, you know, after I broke my leg, I was like, yeah, yeah. I played uh, uh, up to college, I think. And maybe when I came back, I think I played, yeah, after yeah. college too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Phew, like see it, Frankie man, Rodriguez like... throwing the ball fucking 100 yards. <laughs> <laughs> So Those are people that, that throw balls like that, their fucking hands are like this long, bro. Yo, when he said that he roofed a baseball on the projects, that fucked me up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> even a small pro, you know, even a small project, let's say it's 20, 30 floors, right? That's crazy. It's still my projects, my project is 22 floors. Mm-hmm. The one I grew up in. That's still hard. Yeah. And we played, we and we played SpongeBob in our backyard. Ooh. And I hit a ball up in the 18th floor, and that's hitting it. Just imagine trying to throw that bitch that high. That's hmm. what I'm saying. You know, first sponge, sponge ball, the, the heavy sponge ball with yeah. the aluminum bat. Yep. Man, the furthest the furthest ball I've thrown up to my projects was past my grandmother's floor. She lived on the 13th floor. I hit the 15th floor window, and that was the furthest I ever threw a ball. <laughs> and this motherfucker throwing it on the roof. On the roof. Yeah, no, nah, he's no. Nah. He's Thank you, special with his arm. For no, his arm was crazy. Yeah. He was a special talent altogether. Mm-hmm. Bueno. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just joined the show, damn, you're too late. <laughs> I'm yeah. with my partner. <laughs> the, the chango of the show. Chango. We, we've been speaking to our, our, our esteemed colleague here, Mr. John J. Rod Rodriguez. Um, we discussed his come up. Um, his struggle of eight years in the minors. 
eight and, and a half. Don't get eight, it twisted. Oh, 8.5. Yeah. I want to set the record straight. Um, to finally being signed and becoming a part, you know, of a World Series championship team that was pretty stacked with talent. Um, to becoming a husband and a father and everything in between. Um, the one thing that I get uh, a lot over through the story from uh, Mr. Rodriguez is that he was always committed to his craft and he had a great support system. And I, I think that really saw him through in accomplishing uh, his goal. And as you can hear, he still wants to play. <laughs> um, and the only I, reason I don't is because of my son and my daughter just going out and watching them and just – Hey, you guys sell. Every time he asked me, hey, you, I got a tournament coming up. You want to come play with me? I said, and I always tell him, if my son or my daughter don't have nothing, I'm there. Yeah. He's living he like we, just, yeah, we just had, we just went to a tournament not too long ago. Yeah. 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 And, ask him, and ask him how I play. Yeah. Mr. A, to follow up, to follow up on what you said, like about JJ. Um, I've been playing with JJ for playing with JJ pause hold on <laughs> I've been playing so well with JJ you know since he came home years ago we won a couple of chips uh on the con hard top mm-hmm. and uh, we went to tournaments like he said and um you know uh, when he's talking about his son about playing the game right and all that JJ a guy who won the world series and comes with us novices and plays hard I mean out plays everyone and you know motivates guys to push and you know I've had guys come to me that were like Man, I never played with this guy before, you know, but he's a beast. And it's like, yo, he has all the reasons to just come and lay it down. Like, nigga, hold my ring, you know what I mean? <laughs> but he don't play that way. And and, right. and I always have the utmost respect for J- for John for that. Like, I never, I, ne- I never fucking, like, showed up anybody, like, because that's not my style. And mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't feel like anybody should do that anyway. You know, that's like, I, don't, I never want to put anybody down. Like, yeah. I never, ever, I, I my my fear playing softball was always making somebody else feel inferior mm-hmm. when I didn't want them to be. You're mm-hmm. as good as I am. That's and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Nothing else. You shouldn't feel like oh, this dude is. Yeah, he was in the big leagues, bro. Like it's no, don't just play your game. I'm gonna play mine. Let's play play as a team. Let's just right. play as, as a unit. Like it yeah. Nothing. Don't think about where, and if you want to ask me questions on, yo, know, what do you think about this? It's a, and I talk to guys about situations of the game, you know, what I went through, how how to go about it, you know, uh, you know, stories on, you know, my life and the way, you know, how, how I, my journey through, you know, through the minors and the big leagues. And I'm proud to t- talk about that. But that's the one thing I never do is, you know, feel like I'm better than anyone else. Right. Because we're at the end of the day, we fucking bleed the same and we're all men. I want to respect you as you respect me. My my profession shouldn't dictate on the respect that we have for each right. other. Mm-hmm. You could be a fucking you could sell hot dogs on the fucking corner. <laughs> and I could be a mid yeah, seriously. And I could be a no, fucking millionaire. I could mm-hmm. be the, the owner of Amazon. Right. Why would I want to treat you any different? Right. Yeah, for sure. People you know, look like you, Yeah, you're not, you, bro. It's, and that's the people. The people need to just learn how to communicate and be fucking human to each other. Bruce you Lee know? was one of our, you know, one of my favorites. I'm sure many of you guys also growing up favorites. And he always said, "I'm human. I treat yeah. people as human, not Chinese, not American, not yeah. we're humans." And that's how we all should, you know. I teach my kids the same way. Yeah. It's important that, you know, people understand that um, I was told my kids growing up, you know, to treat people with respect that they, you know, as long as it's reciprocated, but you always present yourself in that light. And the other thing I would tell them was I treat the receptionist the same way I treat the CEO, the CFO, you know, everybody gets the same treatment. Exactly. Because there's nothing special. You eat shit and sleep just like I do. Only yeah. thing is that your salary is higher than mine, but that'll make you better. That yeah. doesn't build, that doesn't dictate character. Exactly. There's, there's people that make loads of money and they're piece of shit human beings. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, and I noticed oh, that. Huh. 
<laughs> uh, I, I noticed that uh you know growing up the the people that are coming on to the show now um that we're speaking to and especially the athletes um that Sully has brought on you know these are guys that have done big things just like you but the one thing that they all share in common is they they all carry themselves in that way yeah. you know what I'm saying there's no arrogance there's no oh you know look at what well, I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve that comment for a special group of guys because there was one guy that did act a little bigly, but whatever. I won't call him out. But the bottom line is, let me know who it is. I <laughs> behind the scenes, behind not the now, scenes, but not now, after, I need to know too. Like. Hey, green room, green room. They brought change, yeah. Well, yeah, for real. Um, but it's important that we we stay grounded. You know what I'm saying? You stay grounded. People gravitate to that, and that's when you bring real motherfuckers around you. Exactly. You know what I mean? So you know, yo, as fast or as slow as you got to the top, you fucking go down even faster. Hell yeah. <laughs> you fall even faster like that. Remember we were talking about making that one decision that'll fuck up your life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. It could happen. You burn bridges. Oof. And you're trying to cross over to the next the next level in your life, and you can't because that, that bridge is no longer there. What was the That's kid that you, Brian you? Brian Taylor, right? What was that kid? Yeah. That he got into like a bar fight with his brothers and something and fucked up his hand. He was in the Yankees yep. minor leagues. Fucked up his shoulder and it was yeah. done. Yep. He went so. from yo, he went from 18 years old throwing 99 as a lefty. Mm. Jesus Christ. As a lefty. Hurting himself, going through, you know, his trials and tribulations. Got back throwing 89 to 90. Wow. Bro, Sad. he was the next fucking phenomenon. Bro. Yeah. I remember. And that one instant going out, because obviously he's young, thinks he's Superman. Not saying that, it, but just yeah. being, it could enough, mm -hmm. not even being super, just him being at the wrong place at the right. wrong time. For real. You could just be chilling and get shot. You could just be chilling and, and get arrested and yeah. you got nothing to do with it. Yeah. You got to watch it. Ladies and gentlemen. Mr. John J. Rod Rodriguez, brother, I cannot tell you how much I we appreciate you coming on the show, giving us your time, telling your story. We had a lot of people in the room, man, that were just showing you love. People talking about their little sports, you know, ups and downs and uh, enjoying themselves all the way around. What I like to tell you is that, you know, now that you've come on the show, we tell all our people you're now part of the family. If there's anything in the future that you have coming up that you want to promote, if there's any time that you just want to come on and chop it up about specific things, whatever the case may be, this is the platform to do it on. You're always welcome here. Bro, We're full full away. You, you want to let me rock the ring one night? Yeah, you guys, you guys <laughs> let me know. This shit, yo, I had a lot of fun. You guys let me know. JJ, oh, thank you, my brother. We could talk about anything, bro. Stay in the green room. We're going to tell us about Chincha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to talk in the green room. Just give us a minute. We'll close out the show, and then I'll tell you who I'm talking about. All right, fellas. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Listen, yeah. I, I will say this. Um, we had we had J-Rod on, um, Louis Lopez, Frank Rodriguez, and um, uh, Nelson Figueroa. Figueroa on. Man. The, like great fucking guys. Yeah, man. Oh, oh real, real cats, man. They, yeah. you know, I mean, JJ got the ring. That's the probably yeah. the difference that they don't have, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know. They all have that same uh, energy and characteristics. And if you feel, if you listen to the story, you know, a lot of it's the same. You know, like you know, a single parent or uh, you know, only child, and you know what I'm saying? It's like the, the you know, the stuff they went through. If you, mm -hmm. It's a lot of uh, the same story, it's crazy, yeah, it definitely is. But, um, great fucking dude, great story, you know. And I'm not the sports guy, but I not hate, yet, man. And, and it's yeah, like it's, it's the human story, you know. So, yes, sir, for real. It, you know, I try not to get into this, the, the sports <laughs> talk with it, but uh, <laughs> you know, we have to, we have to go down there. No, we definitely do. Salute you know, to everybody in the room. Yeah, man. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please share it. Hit them likes. Mm -hmm. Try, you know, we we working on things, and you know, we appreciate the support, man. For sure. Get over to YouTube and subscribe to the channel. 
Yes. We're trying to bring it up. We're trying to monetize. We're trying to do a lot of things. Get over to YouTube, man. Share it with Abuela. Share it with your tios. Get them all on deck. I'm going to just right. start grabbing people's phones and like subscribe, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I should have did that shit in the tournament. Doesn't even sound that bad. Yeah. Like I'm going to yeah. start snatching phones out here. For real. Give me oh. that shit. <laughs> For Debo. real. <laughs> Give me that phone, punk. All right. Um, we're not going to discuss uh, what we have coming up. Because mm. we're going to save it. We're going to have a little surprises. Um, before we go, salute to our brothers, the Bree Shooters. They just did uh, their first feature film, and they made an appearance. And they also have one of the members of, uh, not Sons of Anarchy. What's the spinners of Sons? The the Mayans. Mayans. Yeah, they have one of the one of the brothers from the Mayans coming. We need up. some actors, bro. I'm tired of these <laughs> actors giving me the run around. Son is crazy. It's crazy. Fuck. We're, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. We're gonna have to start swapping with the Bree shooters. Y'all get us some actors. We're gonna send you some sports <laughs> guys or something. Yeah, man. Salute to them, man, and congratulations to them. They doing their thing. So check out our brothers, the Bree shooters. And um, so I think we out of here, right? We out, bro. Good night, everybody. We'll Stay see safe, you. everybody. Yeah, we'll see you Wednesday or we'll see you Sunday. We don't know hey. which one's gonna come first. All right, we out. <laughs>